Welcome to a super duper exciting edition of, uh, I guess, Inside Media Monthly now. Uh, we haven't done a show in 18 weeks. What's it been? Four weeks? Three weeks? Something long like time. That. Way too long. Hey, thanks. I'm Ryan Bonds. Kevin Bastos, uh, who's been on Coverage Patrol. Fifth period coverage. Has uh, been helping Fifth out with, with everybody. I, I've, I've heard that. Good news is next semester on six. Uh, what do you have for the period? I have yeah, lunch or prep. I don't know which. Okay, there you go. Perfect. I, was gonna I say, think it's a prep. Because if you have a class, that would really get in the way of the I, show. Yeah. Justin Pinto is here as well. I, I also have this is my lunch. Five and seven. Five and seven. We're going to schedule Inside Media Weekly next semester right now. Let's right do now. it. <laughs> you won't know what time it is. The magic of TV. Are you at home? Well, we do we're watching on your computer. That three-day week on a Thursday? That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Will we see anything over break? No. I can tell you that's a 0% chance for me. Zero? Zero. Zero. <laughs> Point zero? Zero. Zero percent chance. Not I'm a non-zero. Busy zero. This break. It's a zero. I All right. See I'd give you a 1% chance. Nope. Just a chance. Nope. Speaking of busy, the sea... Nope. Where are the sea otters? <laughs> they're, they're, the other camera's on. And they were, they were doing, well, they were starting <sighs> <You> to... <know. laughs> Their viewers, have, their numbers have been down lately. I know, because <laughs> they've, 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 they've canceled, canceled the strike. You're just looking for a new contract. We're, we're, we're moving the camera. It does look mm-hmm. nice in Monterey parakeets. Bay. Um, the last I saw, there were no sea otters, and it wasn't decorated for Christmas. I wonder if it's just a loop. I think we've been lied to all this time. Um, but then the, the hose are, came are out. They were starting to clean the The internet cage. is a fabrication. It could be. And then there they are were, mistruths. They shots, which no, is no, no, just okay. the bay. There's the a bird. One commercial told me if it's on the internet, it must be true. You're a French model? Abraham Lincoln. Yes, I am. <laughs> what commercial was that for? Right? The guy goes to meet the girl from the dating app. You're a French model? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a lie. And clearly he was not. No. The commercial. Speaking of lies. Oh, there's no lies. So no. Spider-Man <clears throat> into the Spider-Verse. Made a lot of money. Made some money this, you know, I, you know especially comparatively What's speaking. on that? Did I say 90? 90 million dollar budget. Um, Ooh, 90 million bigger. dollar budget? Well, ca- Ooh. those cartoons. Really? Stay- those cartoons are expensive. No, they're not. Okay. The, the last couple have been like huge. Mo- the Grinch That's had a big the, budget. Oh, the Grinch is a little Grinch different. Is 75. Is it? I think there's more going Grinch into Spider-Man. Grinch was 75 million? Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Big, the, it's surprising how much the animation Here's what I'm saying. It's, no, no, no. <laughs> it's it's time to bump up our budget. Spider-Verse budget was more. Than the budget for the Grinch, although the Grinch probably had like what three actors and the whole thing. Although, does that say Ralph breaks the internet one hundred seventy-five million? <clears throat> oh yeah, that does not surprise me. Sparing no bit. expense. Mm-mm. Sequel, that amount of money. Yeah, somebody's like, what we need are gold limousines to pick us up as a studio if we're making a still uh, a sequel to this, this one. Like a lot of number, a big number. Oh no, they've got nice lunches coming in. You figure it takes what three, four days to record all that dialogue. So, <laughs> so you know, fifty million dollars a day. Okay, go, yeah. can you do it for one seventy five? Deal. <laughs> So I don't think thirty million dollars is enough for a ninety million dollar budget. My guess is the producer and the director made a lot of money out of that. The Spider Verse better be making a lot of money overseas. I understand. I don't think it's getting to ninety million. I think it's going to make ninety million once you sell all those things. Plus the reviews are fabulous, just out of control. Yeah, well, there's a lot of movies that have good reviews, and they normally win Best Picture and don't make a lot of money. Well, that's a different story. (laughs) That's this has the combination of popcorn and good. I think, well, I mean, if you only make thirty million your first weekend, though, and you're going to go down, <coughs> probably. I Although mean, it is the biggest opening ever for an animation <laughs> in December. <laughs> there we go with the, oh, all the uh, qualifications. But starring uh, a half of an alphabet. arachnid <laughs> superhero in <laughs> many <December>. of them. <laughs> well, yeah, they have multiples. So is this you know, obviously uh, this is a way to kind of. Get everybody's favorite Super Spider-Man's all together in one movie, right? Kind of bringing different... Including Peter Porker, Including the Peter spectacular Porker. Spider-Ham. <laughs> I made that joke in my home, and my, my daughter said, Oh my gosh, John Mulaney plays him. I love him. <laughs> it's like, whoa, slow down. Wow. Yeah, she was jumping right on it. That's fantastic. Okay, so mm-hmm. is this going to open any doors for any, any future stuff? I mean, it's getting great reviews. It's Obviously, it was number one movie this past weekend. Um Obviously, we've been kind of focused on the live action for the most part. But I, I mean, personally, 
I kind of rather see Mortal Engines than Spider-Man in the Spider-Verse. You're in a minority there. I know. I can see well, that. I, by, say, I can see that based upon about the money, money that we made. Yeah. Uh, Moral mm-hmm. Engines, of course, Peter, the Peter Jackson film is an enormous flop. Uh, Seven million dollars opening weekend. Uh, the budget's one hundred, but really, there's everybody's kind of claiming it's one forty-five. I guess. With, well, with the promotion and all that kind there of stuff. There were a lot but. of commercials, and I kept watching it, going, "What is this?" <laughs> I've had. I've, oh, from the guy who brought me a movie twelve years ago, yeah. and then I asked my students. Kids, have you guys seen Lord of the Rings? Crickets. Crickets. Have they seen The Hobbit, though? More recently. I don't think they What about King that. Kong? The Peter Jackson version. But that one's like 12 years ago now, too. That's, yeah. I, I, Peter I stayed was, too quiet for too long. In my talking to just normal mm-hmm. people, I had two people talk to me about Mortal Engines, and only one person talked to me about Spider-Verse. Wow. And that does not include well, you guys. I, I understand, but this is <laughs> and not... And I run in a pretty nerdy circle. I, I understand, like Spider-Man. but th- most people who go see the movies are not, you know, our age, our people, our peers. Kids go see movies. And I would tell you there's probably zero kids who are in to go see Mortal Engines or whatever. I, I, I kind of want to go see it. I, I understand. You're, you're going to have an easy to time getting it's tickets. It's a city's on wheels. I mean, I can sell it. Like, yeah, go on. The trailer told me what it's about. We have to stop London. First, Golden Compass. Second. <laughs> Golden Compass. Didn't see. <laughs> on the books. Didn't read. Okay. Good. 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 I, I actually I was read intrigued. I was intrigued by one it. One and a half of them. Seemed interesting to me. Mm-hmm. But then I... Uh, yeah. <laughs> So it might also be that over the last fifteen years, I've not seen it. <laughs> yeah, that interesting. Yes, got it. it. That, got it. it. <laughs> and of course, uh, the mule number two—that's uh, the Clint Eastwood, that looks pretty right? Good that too. looks uh, Clint Eastwood. I'm, I'm, is that up for Golden Globe? Well, I have Golden Globes in no, later in the yes. rundown. We'll get to. Didn't you get the rundown? Uh, I forgot to send it. Yeah, um, I think I got it. Mm-hmm. My intel tells me no. no. And of course, Grin, Grinch and both and Ralph breaks the internet. Still making money, making still. lots of money. Um, they both beat Mortal Engines. Wow. Creed two, which That's may be tons, which still. may be Sly's final final portrayal of Rocky Balboa. This is the fifth time I think he said, "This is this is it. I'm done. I'm passing the torch on." I got to say though, on a fifty million dollar budget, right? Mm-hmm. Creed two, yeah, it's made over one hundred four. And the Creed was spectacular. Man, I keep talking about that. I gotta see this film. I'm probably not gonna see it in the theaters, but I give you a one percent chance. Zero um, percent. I, I said in total, not just I, not over break. I'm just saying forever. One oh, oh. percent chance to see Creed in the movie theater too? Mm, no, zero. <laughs> zero. I really wanted to tell, come back from break and go. You know what? I want saw the <laughs> Creed two over break. <laughs> I really I want that to happen. <laughs> I saw Mortal Engines. <laughs> <laughs> I did a double feature, Mortal Engines and Creed 2. Of course, Bohemian Rhapsody is still doing well, um, Instant Family. Number nine, we're going to get to it in a second, because I know both of you saw uh, Fantastic Beast. Um, but uh, Green Book, which I believe is up for some, uh, already up for some nominations and stuff. And then Once Upon a Deadpool, which I want to discuss too, this PG-13 version, including Fred Savage. Uh, What's first? But let's go to, I want to hear about Fantastic Beast, The Crime of Grind- Crimes of Grindelwald. Um, I assume you both saw the first Fantastic Beast film, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> in the theater. As I did well. not see it in the theater. Okay. I did see it in the theater, and I did not see it at home. Hmm. I've not watched it again. I wanted to, but I did not. Huh. We watched it, you know, when it came out on Blu-ray, and then some other time, and then we sat down and had everyone watch it again. I went to watch it. I thought I owned it, and if I do own it, I could not find so, it. Hmm. <laughs> And I was not paying for it. Was it under F Mm -hmm. for Fantastic Beasts? You know, the the organization of the basement is not real. Is it uh, not real? There's a lot of spaces it could be. Mine is with the Harry Potters. All right, so talk. Tell me, like, dislike. Where, (coughs) where is this all fitting within the, you know, universe of Harry Potter world? And obviously, it's. I'll toss it to Mr. Pinto first. (laughs) Well, it fits before Harry Potter. Yes, it's well before Harry Potter, isn't it? Like, I, I don't know... 20s, 30s, somewhere in that range. Like the 1920s or 30s, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. 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 So I don't know when Harry Potter's supposed to take place. 90s. Per se. I don't mm-hmm. remember, like... Somewhere in I'm the sure 90s. there's been a timeline put to it later. There are. Yeah. But, um... I liked it. Um, I don't like it as much as the first one, but... 
I think the first one could, A, they made a movie. Mm -hmm. This is one of like five movies now because there's going to be, what, three more? Mm -hmm. So five total. The first one was just going to be a movie. This is now the second of five. So you're in a whole different realm of storytelling. Stretching the plot out. Yeah. Right. And, and, out. And, and, and I mean... At least the fifth movie has been broken into the, three parts. Yes. So. <laughs> one part two, part three. The Death of Lee Grindelwald. The first one's just the credits. Um, it was... Uh, the people, my friends saw it, and, we, and I talked about it. They were much more down on it than I was. Um, their complaints aren't wrong. It does seem to not have a lot of plot for a while. And then towards the end... Ramps up a lot. Um, I think it's part of making a two-hour movie that's going to be part of an eight-hour movie mm-hmm. or ten hours of movies, whatever right. it breaks down. But I liked it. I mean, I still think it's an interesting world. I, I like the timeline. I like the 1920s, 1930s. Like, I like Boardwalk Empire. Mm-hmm. I like movies set in that time and, and things like that. Um, it, it, you know, it's not as interesting as the first time, but not, not many sequels are better than the first right. movies. So... Uh, but overall, I enjoyed it. I'd, I'd go see it again. Oh. I, I'm with a company of friends. I'm more down on it. Um, I don't know where I'd put it in my list of movies. I did not like it as much as the first. Um, different complaints than you. I think it's a book, not a mil- movie. Mm. Um, the plot is told a lot through dialogue. A lot of what happens is very dialogue focused and especially the climax of the film. Like these moments of revelation are all three people talking back and forth about things that happened in the past. And that, to me, was very frustrating. I mean, these really important moments in this five, seven-minute scene of people talking about things that happened in the past. And instead of that, I wanted them to show the flashbacks. Like, they had these flashbacks of scenarios and scenes that happened, but it was, you know, a little bit of voiceover with this, and it wasn't so much these scenarios and scenes happening. Uh, I also like did not like that they really took a character who I thought was um, pleasant and even to a point lovable in the film and modified that character for this movie just to advance the plot line. I hated that. Um, but I like the story. And I'm with Pinto. I like that timeline. I like the setup there. It's a very interesting world. Um, I think it could go somewhere. Um, I'm sort of worried about red herrings that have been placed. Like, this is this, this is this, this is this. And I'm worried that it may switch over. Um, I mean, <clears throat> as much as I like the Harry Potter scenario, um, I did not like how in the seventh book there were a lot of things that were revealed right at the end, sort of Deus Ex Machina, like this. We've written ourselves into a corner. What are we going to do? Oh, well, let's create these other things at the end to bring in this closure. I'm worried about that happening again with this storyline. But I also know that she's writing this arc as a whole. Hopefully there will be better things together. I wish she would have hired um, a screenwriter or two instead of taking that role as her own. She's a much better author than she is a movie writer. Okay. They are different. Very. very. Different, different mediums. I mean, I think so much about so many movies that are great coming from books that are okay or vice versa books that are great and you try to make them into movies and there's so few that work on both sides of that um uh i think um what was the one i thought of oh like old hitchcock rebecca from uh, and i don't know frick loves that book from a good book that became uh, a great film um trying to think of another one. Oh, jurassic park i think is another popcorn movie where the book and film are both great in their own rights, but they go different ways. Mm-hmm. They're set differently. But even like the um, Psycho from Hitchcock being remade shot for shot in that later version that's just terrible. Um, Sin City is another different kind of a medium where they used Frank Miller comic book to create that screenplay. And the first one's very good, and the second one's okay. I think they handpicked these are the stories that are going to work in that transition to film. That's going to be great. And the second time around, they didn't have What do we have left? Right. All right. We got to... Uh, right. We, we better be... Cut. We got one more trip to this well to make money. Mm-hmm. And, and they didn't. It was a failure. It did not make money, and it wasn't what I'd call Did good. the first one make that much money? Oh, yeah. A lot. I think the budget was somewhere in the neighborhood of... <laughs> I mean, it had Bruce Willis. It had to be expensive mm-hmm. budget. Uh, yeah, but I think it made money, especially since they went back to that well. And they're like, let's make another one. Um, and I know the, the second one just was 
uh, like open its seventh place kind of thing, sort of Mortal Engines kind of a place. <laughs> I think it opens Mortal, Mortal Engines. Mortal Engines. I kind of want to see it. I don't really uh, want to see Spider Verse, but I don't really like Spider Man. He's not my favorite superhero. Uh, I, I, I'm, every time I've read Spider Man comics, I'm just not interested. There's a couple great arcs. I mean, but Spider Man is kind of like it's kind of like the Batman because Batman has all the good villains, really, and Spider Man has the good villains. <coughs> Yeah. Spider-Man villains are really good. As that villains initial go. creation, uh, Ditko's first thirty some issues or whatever, just hit after hit after hit after hit. And I have a hard time reading after great really after great. old comic books because they are told mm-hmm. very much in dialogue. Mm-hmm. You're reading it's it's panels of just like writing like a little guy in the middle because it's all exposition and they're explaining it. I mean, it was a different world of writing at the mm-hmm. time and a different you know. The first twenty, uh, I think, with the exception of like number seven and ten or something are all pretty good and then after that you feel the scraping a little bit at the bottom of the barrel and it's not as good but still those 20 characters are the background of that whole oh, yeah, universe just, that, that keeps just, going yeah just yeah the new character new mm-hmm. character new character and it's good stuff good stuff and even some of those like the what is it um, chameleon that's sort of more like a B-level villain for him, are still right in that level. And Kingpin was the Spider-Man construct initially, um, but a lot of like what became the Marvel Universe was right there. So. All right. so, Spider-Ham. Spider-Ham. Peter Porker and the Spectacular <laughs> spider So as far as Fantastic Beasts go, you got two more years to wait, I think. The next one's November 2020-ish time frame. Um... I'll set my, this, this I'll set my watch. Thank you. That's the thing, you know, looking back, of course, the brilliance of the Harry Potter thing was this the whole series was that, you know, the characters aged in a particular order that matched, you know, and so people that were reading it, you know, so kids didn't necessarily bore of it, despite, the, you know, being the, the main target audience. The novels curious, got so. more mature as they went. Right, and, but... As opposed to keeping them the same. But her production so. really slowed down, too. I want to say third into fourth, there was like a three and a half year gap or yeah. something ridiculous. George R.R.'s got her beat. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Don't worry, J.K. George R.R. I keep reading interviews with him. He's like, oh, I'm really working on it. In the meantime, Someday. here's these other three books here's I've other, written on the yes. side. Here's that a book about the history contrary. of the book I'm not writing. Right. <laughs> but I'll get you that other one coming for realsies <laughs> i wish it was done too <laughs> so once upon a deadpool let's get to that it's number <laughs> 11 this week there's no budget listed i assume the fred savage uh, sequences have a you know a, one million dollars <laughs> a market value um you know only 2.6 million and i mean again we mentioned it was only 1500 theaters <laughs> but um <laughs> You're are only going to get the hardcore fans. Milking this too much here already, that, you know? Or are they? Is I it, actually asked my kids if they wanted to go see it because they haven't seen any Deadpool films. But sure. I take them to this, and they're like, eh. oh. I, "I'm." I would buy it and have them watch it at the house, and I think that's where they're going to cover it. Yeah. But well, I mean, if you can already buy Deadpool too, mm-hmm. so you're really just paying for the sequence of Fred Sat. Like, if you're going to the movies, you're really looking for something to do and like Deadpool. Or again, as you say, and you're avoiding the people who want to bring kids along that may have yeah, the I kids mean, been begging to see Deadpool and said no, 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 and then and there are terrible have... parents like the twenty or so <laughs> parents that were in the Deadpool and Deadpool theater with their little kids. Yeah, I was nice. like, uh, all right, well, <laughs> I mean, it's not good, not kid. No. He's rated R for a reason. <clears throat> Is there, for many reasons. Yes. Is there Deadpool many. three? Oh, that's true. Is yes. Deadpool three already on the? Uh, I don't think the so. Books for uh, I don't think so. No, because they announced the character, I forget his name, the one who was all in legal trouble. They're like, he's not coming back for the third one. Then he made an announcement. He was like, there is no third one yet. No one's done anything. So it's not even on the books. On IMDb, it says, all it says is Deadpool 3, not mm-hmm. do nothing. The film is rumored to involve another popular group in the X-Men mythos, X-Force. So I, was... I thought X-Force was sort of in, in the second Deadpool one. Too? Yeah. Well, this could have been from, oh, this was updated in November. 2016. So there you go. <laughs> so, so, so this Deadpool 3 appears to have been made into <laughs> Deadpool 2. Okay. <laughs> so are you surprised at all by the top, since, you know, we're going to get a head start on everybody that does those end of the year things. Are you surprised at all by the 
the top 10 or 15 movies of this past year um, as far as box office goes. I am surprised that Black Panther beat Avengers. Not surprised after seeing them, but surprised going mm-hmm. into it. I mean, it was it was a better film. I, I am surprised at the gap from Incredibles 2 to Jurassic World. That's big. Sure. That, I mean, it's nearly one and a half times as much. It's almost the difference between Jurassic World and Venom. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, I think that... Um, <clears throat> Jurassic yeah. World's almost as close to tenth as it is to third. The big surprises to me, obviously, well, Black Panther, as you said, I don't think any of us would. I don't think anybody on the planet would have picked oh, Black no. Panther to be, make make seven hundred million dollars before it came out. No, and, right. no chance. After seeing sure. how much money it made and as fast as it did, yeah, uh, I mean, it didn't become surprising when it was out. When no. once it was outpacing Avengers, it was never Avengers were never going to catch it. No, and it was great, just great. Um, and then you know, I'd say Mission Impossible Fallout. I'm surprised and that's as high Solo, as both considered kind of flops in essence. And really? I think, I think in comparison to um, you know, I mean, I think their Solo previous. Definitely. Mission Impossible Fault, though, isn't that the most money it ever made domestically? Well, but. Uh, I mean, not adjusted for inflation, but I think it's just, <laughs> I think it grossed the most out of the Mission Impossible well, I think, franchise. I felt like I think it, it slipped again third or something, and then the fourth and fifth ones were very good. Yeah, the fifth one. I think Ghost Protocol made the most money worldwide. The fourth or fifth made the most money worldwide. But I feel like Fallout, not adjusted, beat out. Mission Impossible 2 was the highest grossing one domestically for a long time. But I think Mission Impossible Fallout beat it. Hmm. Um, uh, Mission Impossible Venom made, uh, I, I think, $700 million worldwide. I, mean, I think it made $500 million worldwide. Good for them, man. And I, I haven't seen it. No, but, but I mean, I think everybody looking at the commercials for Venom... I mean, the people I go to the movies with the most, we go to see comic book movies. Mm-hmm. They went and saw Harry Potter. I didn't. But none of them saw Venom. <laughs> like, it like, wasn't even on the list of movies for us to go see. It wasn't like, are we going to see Venom? Nah, let's skip it. Nobody even asked about it. It was just like, it wasn't even like, we, didn't even, we just did all independently decided we didn't want to see it. And yet it made $700 million worldwide. Two, even 200 in the United States is not something that's shabby. Yeah. Any movie would virtually sign up to make $200 million in the United States. You know what the, I mean? Uh, yeah, Take Fallout. away your Black Panther Avengers. Your, you know what I mean? But this is this year. This is this is this year. And what are the movies below that that didn't make that two hundred million? I mean, <laughs> okay, yeah. Halloween. I wouldn't have expected. That's a big earning for that. Quiet Place was a very I, I surprising have to applaud. thing. Ready Player One. Is the Meg. Oh yeah. By the way, mm-hmm. too. You got to applaud the Meg for being. Oh, listen. <laughs> Good for the Meg. <laughs> That, and that, um, the, that's a movie with what? Like, like Ralph Breaks budget, the Internet is, might not catch Venom domestically. That's that's incredible. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. That it's already it's at one fifty four, but it's already been out for what three or four weeks. It may not catch Venom. Yeah. It might not It'll catch get a boost at Christmas. It might not catch a Quiet Place. It'll get a boost, but you a also have the Grinch still. See, you know what I mean? After Christmas, though, the Grinch is done. Like the twenty sixth, and no one's going to want to go see <laughs> that anymore. But Nobody what about the, the Nutcracker in the Four Realms? Might get a boost here coming up. <laughs> Yeesh. I think they were hoping to stretch it through then, and they didn't even get close. No, they released too many movies. It's all di- how you can't have, you can't put it out against the Grinch, because kids don't want to see the Nutcracker in the Four Realms. No. That's not a kids movie. The Grinch is I think a kid. The movie. adults wanted to go see it. No, <laughs> nobody wants to see the. Nutcracker. Yeah, some people do. It keeps coming around. I they bring in who's the narrator of that? Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Yeah, I know he's in it or something related. Let's bring Morgan Freeman in. Pay me some money. I'm there. <laughs> so <laughs> most of us are. Most of you know. Oh, you need what? Twenty million? Okay. Mm, okay. <laughs> Fine. Big bills, please. Big bills. We're almost. We're running out of time quickly. How but do we do let's. That? I, well, well, we haven't met in a month. <laughs> Lots happened. Truth. So. In our hiatus, our long hiatus, this is not even going to load, is it? The uh, Golden Globe nominees, oh, nominations came yes. out. Um, we have another Martian Martian, situation. the <laughs> funniest film ever. Maybe it was a musical. They might have said musical. <laughs> because. This is dumb. Ugh. Vice. Somehow Vice is nominated for. Now, the commercial has some jokes in it, it, but if you go to the IMDb page, it says drama. 
I understand. Now, I don't know who to trust. If I go to the IMDb page on Martian, is it going to say musical? <laughs> I don't think so. That's my point. What are we doing? How is Never Vice? Know. Oh. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> at least it's a dramedy. Like it has those elements of it. Oh. Martian, I don't remember laughing. Like there may have been a ad chuckle. joke. I think we've I laughed more about twice. it winning the yes. picture. Oh yes, than people did at the that, movie. That's the joke. There were there was it's like one, one Alanis Morissette's I I was reading the best picture nominees so, of all and mm-hmm. thought to myself, this is the down year of movies. Let's see. So you have Black Panther. Um, you Black, Black K.K. Klansman. Yeah, and Bohemian Rhapsody. Of Beale Street oh, to those are. And The Star is Born. Okay, I would put my money right now on Star is Born. I mean, I think A Star is Born could be nominated for Best mm-hmm. Picture. Yes. At the Academy Awards. But it could also be nominated for drama, I'm sorry, comedy or musical. Is it about music? It's about music, yeah. Do you think we should switch those two? <laughs> sure, Vice and, why not? You know? <laughs> Maybe cares? when is going to be the first year that the same movie wins both drama and <laughs> musical? Because it's up for both. <laughs> now the Golden Globes can really out Golden Globes themselves. But So then you flip over to musical and comedy, and we have Crazy Rich Asians, their favorite uh, green book, Mary Poppins Returns, and Vice. I think Mary Poppins Returns is going to win that one. I think Vice. Nope. Mary Poppins Returns. Is it even a good... It, eight I people seen have it. seen the movie. I haven't seen it. Like, it doesn't matter. Seen it they sent it out screeners. to the Golden Globe screeners. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There, there is... This is the Golden Globes. I understand. And they do what they want to do. So I think it's There's like Vice, 112 people It's either Vice or Crazy Rich Asians. I don't think so. I think it's going to be Mary Poppins. We'll have to do the Golden Globes. We will do the Golden, <laughs> Golden Globes show prior to... Uh, the Golden Globes happening. So, um, if you can't, I, I know this is unbelievable. We have one minute left. 2019, and we'll discuss it in the next show. Supposedly, it's going to have the most superhero movies ever released in the theater in one year. 11. This year ever. We, I thought we were kind of waning a little bit, and there's just the big 10. I thought ones. we were too. There's 11 no. superhero movies. Venom makes up. 212 million. People are like. Carnage. Right. Get Carnage. Right. Get, get him on the phone. As a cartoon. <laughs> with the other Carnages. <laughs> and spect- uh, Spider-Ham. All right, so we've got a big we- uh, battle this weekend. Okay, so uh, Aquaman. Uh, going to see it tomorrow. Bumblebee. Bumblebee's getting great reviews. And second act. In. And then <laughs> Welcome to Marwin, which mm. looks bizarre. unbelievably bizarre. Um, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, Wes Anderson, new movie. I got him. No, it's Robert Zemeckis. So, okay. So... <laughs> I'm curious. I, I, I assume there's more than just I'm playing curious. with the Barbie dolls, right? So Probably. We'll oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. Well, that's all the time we have on for this edition of Inside Media, weekly, monthly, whatever whatever it is. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. I have my tickets. I'm going to see Aquaman. 